fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been instrumental in founding the town of Eureka. It was there that their old friend Barnaby Boggs made his home. His niece Judy lived with him. Judy, I declare I've been so all fired well behaved during the past year that not even the Lone Ranger could have cause for complaint. I wonder if we'll ever see him again. Well, my dear, I'll tell you. As long as Eureka is a well-run town, <clears throat> and uh, with me as mayor, I don't expect he'll show up. I'm afraid not. But let there be some sign of underhanded crooked dealing, and you can start looking for him. But how will he know what's going on? Uh, Judy, that man has ways of knowing things that baffle understanding. I do declare there are times when I think he's psychic or something. And then we may be seeing him soon. What's that? Have you been watching those two crooks that he hoped would reform? Simon Richfield and Deke? Yes. But they've given no one any cause for complaint, my dear. Model citizens, I'd call them. They were, until you were elected mayor of Eureka. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, dare say that was a blow to Richfield. It was, and he's going to do something about it. I'll tell the new sheriff to keep an eye on him. Oh, Uncle Barnaby, you know Simon Richfield better than that. What do you mean? He won't give the law any cause to jail him. He's too smart for that. Hmm. Judith, what lies back of your assertions? You probably wouldn't take me seriously. I... Well, it's just something that I heard, and a... I guess you'd call it a hunch. My dear, I'd call it a womanly intuition, and I'd take it seriously. Well, I was in the kitchen back of the cafe. Yes? The walls are thin, you know. Merely a temporary structure. Anyway, there were two men in the little private office next to the kitchen, and I could hear them talking when they raised their voices. I recognized Richfield and Deke. To the point, Judy. Get to the point. What did you hear them say? For some time, they talked in a low voice, and I couldn't make it out. In fact, I wasn't even interested until I heard Deke's chair fall over, and he spoke so loudly that I could hear every word. How many times have I got to tell you I don't want any part of it? You're a fool, Deke. A blind fool. Well, I'm out of jail, and I'm not being hunted by the law. Satisfied with things as they are. Well, I'm not. I can't stay here and go, Marsh. You can do what you want, but don't count on me. Don't worry, I won't. From now on, you go your way and I'll go mine. That suits me. But remember just one thing, Deke. You squeal on me, it'll be the last time you'll talk to anyone. Nah, how can I squeal? 
I don't know your plan. Get him it without hearing it. That's typical of you. You said it was a scheme to get rich in a hurry. That's enough for me. I don't want to know what the plan is. And that was all I could hear, Uncle Barnaby. Mm, just enough to make me downright curious. Awful curious. I suppose I might question Deke. But then, according to what you heard, he doesn't know what Richfield's up to. Deke left Eureka a little while ago. It left town? For keeps, I think. He took everything he owned with him. Mm, I see. I'll see who that is. You sit still, Uncle Barnaby. Ah, oh, my dear, what a treasure you are. Yes? How do you do, young lady? My name is Bowers, Jake Bowers. Yes? I just arrived in your town. I'm looking for a gentleman named Richfield, Simon Richfield. Oh. Do you know where I might find him? He's generally in the cafe at this time of day. Thank you. I'll look there. <laughs> By the way, Richfield, didn't you have a partner named Deke? He got cold feet and left town. Cold feet? Without even knowing the plan I had in mind? He's got ideas of staying honest. <laughs> As for me, I prefer the things that money can buy. I can count on you. I told you that in my last letter. You didn't come all the way out here without knowing about me, did you? No, I didn't. I checked up on you. Well, then, get to the point. What is this big idea of yours? Richfield... How would you like to be a banker? A banker? If I wanted to go into business, I'd open a cafe. There's more money in banking. That calls for proof. I mean, my kind of banking. Now, talk sense, Bowers. To open a bank would need capital and a charter and a score of other things. That, sir, is where you're wrong. All you need is a large room and a safe in which to keep the money. I've already lined up a place in Junction City. Well, that's three days away. My home is here. Mm-hmm. To be sure. You'll open the bank here, and I shall do the same in Junction City. Now, with two banks, we can uh, maneuver things to make a fortune. Maybe you know what you're talking about. Go on, I'll uh, tell you when to stop. You see, I have a connection with a printer that can make paper money for us. You don't mean kind of a... Oh, by no means. We issue notes on our own banks. Junction City Bank notes and Eureka Bank notes. People deposit gold and silver money... We give them paper money. How far would the law let us go? Oh, it's quite legal. Banks all over the country issue their own currency. There's nothing wrong about it as long as there's gold to bag it up. Uh-huh. I'm learning things. Uh, what if someone comes in and wants to exchange that paper money? You exchange it for notes issued by my bank in Junction City. I, in turn, swap it for notes issued by the Eureka Bank. Then they'll have to go to Junction City to cash those notes, eh? Of course. They do make the three-day trip, and if there's no alternative, I'll give them gold up to a certain point. Always, I think you have an idea. Yes, sir, a good idea. Now, let's get down to the details. A few weeks later, there was a bank in the town of Eureka. Barnaby Boggs eyed Simon Richfield with suspicion but found no indication of anything illegal. The paper money was in circulation and was accepted by the townspeople. Boggs, however, wasn't satisfied. Oh, go on, Sheriff, I tell you there's something crooked going on. Now, look, Barnaby, why don't you just figure that maybe Richfield might have had crooked plans and dropped him? He's turned out to be a right helpful citizen in this here town. Well, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe so. To tell the truth, Boggs, I'd sooner trust Richfield than not trust him. Especially if I was you. How's that? You got together a tidy sum of cash since you helped start this town. Oh, not so much. Uh, don't tell me. I've heard about the poker games you've cleaned out. <laughs> Who, me? On top of that, you've made some pretty fair deals in real estate. You must have several thousand dollars in your house. Shh, not so loud, Sheriff. You see? You are nervous about it. Well, if I was you, I'd take a chance on Richfield's bank sooner than on thieves breaking into the house. There's already been several robberies around here. Even as the sheriff spoke, there were thieves in the home of the mayor. They crept in through a rear door and entered the living room where Judy sat. Just keep still. Oh. Quiet or we'll quiet her. What do you want? We didn't come to ask the time of day. Where's the old man keep his money? Thieves. You called it, lady. Now talk up and fast. 
We'll have to find a way to persuade you. You get out of here. My uncle will be back most any minute, and if he finds that you here... That old tadpole better not come nowhere through. I'm hankering to see what would happen if a bullet hit that fat stomach of his. You, you killers. Where's the cash? I won't tell you. Let go of me. Talk. You're hurting my arm. Talk her by the lemon daylights. I'll do more and hurt it. Red, keep watch out of that window. Yeah, I'll watch. Go on, make her tell Bob's hiding place. You... You beast. You'll pay for this. You ready to talk? No. Not even if you twist my arm off, I will Hey, what is it? Someone coming here. Good. Hey, he's wearing a mask. A mask? Let me see. You come to the window with me. <laughs> he's reined up right outside the house. Coming here, sure enough. Now you'll get You listen to me. You so much as open your face and I'll shoot. We ain't fooling about this, see? Red, get your gun and stand ready. Right. We all fix things so as that mask hombre gets the blame for this. Curious that he'd rap being mask and all. Make the girl tell him to walk right in. You heard what my pal said. Tell him to open the door and walk in. I'll nail him the minute he steps inside. Go on, speak up. Look out, thief. Why you... I'm in shooting. Shut her up. <coughs> get him. I'll get you. Oh. Oh. I'll get you for that one. Leave it alone or I'll break your other arm. <coughs> Help me. Either of you want any more? Are you dirty? Well, how about it? You going to complete the draw for your other gun? No. I'll draw it for you. There. I'll leave it on the table. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't ducked down. Judy, are you all right? Yes, I, I guess so. They were twisting my arm, but I guess it's all right. Who are these two? I never saw them before. They were after Uncle Barnaby's money. Does he keep it here in the house? Yes. Come on, Barnaby. Hurry up. Oh, here comes the sheriff. A little late, isn't he? Wait for me, sheriff. What's all the guns say? What? Get them up. Steady, Sheriff. Sheriff, not that man. There are your prisoners. Great day. Red Lofgren or Spike Tiger. Never mind the talk. Patch this wound, take us to jail. Judy! Judy, that white horse out front. Hello, Barnaby. You! He saved your money. What happened to you, Judy? Oh, I'm all right. One of those polecats slapped me, that's all. She shouted a warning that saved my life, Bugs. We'll deal with these crooks. Go on, both of you. Get going. We're wounded. You get patched up when we get to the jail. Now, shove on before I gun slick your hair. Oh, I'll be over large the formal sure. complaint, Sheriff. Take your time, Boggs. They ain't going nowhere. My sakes. Their first bullet went through the glass in that door. Don't mind that. I'm grateful that you and Judy are safe. Well, uh, you must have been doing all right, Barnaby. Eh? Huh? Eureka's grown since the last time I saw it. Yes, yes, it certainly has. Remember when it was just a lot of open ground? I tell you, things are booming. And you're the mayor? That's right. Mayor, justice of peace, no republic with seal, and uh, handle a little real estate business on the side. Uncle Barnaby is very grateful to you for all you did. You've made a good citizen of him. Hey, hold on. You must have had a reason for coming here. It's Richfield, isn't it? I uh, see he's opened a bank. He has, and I, for one, suspect ulterior motives. Uncle Barnaby, no matter what you suspect, you're going to put your money in that bank. I'll not go through another incident like this... This last one, simply because everyone knows you keep a lot of cash in the house. Now, just a moment, my dear. Before you decide that Richfield's on the level, tell the masked man what you overheard just before he opened his bank. Did you overhear something, Judy? Yes. She heard Richfield fighting with Deke because Deke wouldn't go along on a new get-rich-quick scheme. Just after that, Deke left town. I see. Then a man named Bowers come here and spent a few days talking to Richfield. Where is Bowers? He settled in Junction City. Opened a bank there. A bank like Richfield's. A bank that, like Richfield's, issued its own currency. I see. Barnaby, you asked why I came to Eureka. Yes. I, I rather hoped it was a social call. I wish that could have been the case, Judy. You came here because you think the same as I do, that Richfield's a crook. Isn't that so? I uh, came to ask you to put your money in Richfield's bank. There. You see, Uncle Barnaby? What? You mean that? Yes. Now he'll do it. Will you? Well, if you say so, but I declare that's the last thing in the world I'd expect you to say. You must have a reason for making that request. I have, Barnaby. A very good reason. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was on the day after the Lone Ranger had appeared in town. Simon Richfield was surprised to see Barnaby Boggs enter the bank. Boggs, this is a surprise. Richfield, I came to put my gold into the bank. I see. Well, I'm happy to welcome you as a depositor. There's one thing I want to get straight, Richfield. Yes? When I draw cash, what do I get? Bank notes, same as everybody else. Put out by the Junction City Bank, I suppose, huh? Probably. If I want the gold instead of the paper, then why? Oh, of course you may have the gold if you insist on it. That's what I wanted to know. But what if I come here with Junction City paper money? Well, of course, that would be redeemed by the Junction City Bank. Uh-huh. Well, how is it that you pass out so much paper money that's issued by the Junction City Bank, and the bank over there passes out the paper that's issued by the Eureka Bank? <laughs> Boggs, there are things about the circulation of currency that you don't understand. I'm expecting to learn a few things in the next couple of days. I'll uh, have this gold deposited and a bank book made out for you. I'll see what you do. Uh, one thing more, Richfield. Yes? You better be on the level. Yes? The Lone Ranger gave you a chance to go straight. Remember that? Of course I do. Well, I have a notion that he's checking up. He'd be pretty put out to find that he'd made a mistake in giving you a chance. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been camped near town for nearly a week, keeping a close watch on the Eureka Bank and Simon Richfield. The masked man watched Tonto approach at sunset. He knew by the manner of his Indian friend that Tonto had something new to tell. Oh, scum, ho, father, ho, ho, father, ho. What is ho. it, Tonto? You know, something happened. No, you have something to tell me when you ride like that. That's right. About Simon Richfield? That's right. Him send messenger to East several days ago. I remember that. What about it? Well, today, fellow from Junction City come to Eureka. Who? Fellow named Bowers. The man who runs the Junction City Bank. That's right. And those two are friendly. That much is confirmed. Ah, them plenty friendly. Me see him meet, shake hands, go to cafe, and take back room for meeting. Tato, how long ago did that happen? Just a few minutes. Me come here fast to tell you. Give me a hand with silver, will you? You want saddle? Yes. <laughs> Steady, Silver. Easy, fellow. Me get saddle from trees. Steady, boy. He's been waiting for several days for a chance to run. May get it sooner than we thought. Uh, here. Here, saddle. Thanks. There. Now, I'm going to the cafe. Uh-huh. You go to Barnaby Boggs. Tell him to meet me there. Uh-huh. Me tell him. You say those two bankers are in the back room? That's right. And Boggs and I will have to hold our conference in the kitchen. There. I'll wait for him there. Now, get going. Steady, Scout. Steady. Get him up, Scout. Easy. Wait a minute, Silver. Mom, Silver. <laughs> I'll have some food brought in. I can't eat when I'm upset. What's happened anyway, Richfield? Why did you send such an urgent message for me? Keep your voice down. These walls are no better than paper. Uh, what's beyond that wall? Another private room? No, that's just the kitchen. Have a drink, Bowers? Thank you. Now, listen. You remember hearing me speak about the Lone Ranger? Yes, of course. I've heard a lot of others speak of him, too. What about him? Uh, here's to you. Look. <laughs> <laughs> He's here near Eureka. Oh, you sure of that? He was here a week ago when I sent you that message. I haven't seen him for the past few days, but I think he's still nearby and watching me. Has he anything on you? No, uh, but he's trying to get something. He had Barnaby Boggs put a couple of thousand gold in my bag. You're in the clear so far, aren't you? Of course. But if there's a run, if everyone starts trying to cash in the paper money at one time... Most of those who hold money in your bank are in Junction City. True enough. But if there's a plot to expose me, this mass man could get the currency together. What's that? Shh, quiet. Boggs is in the kitchen. I told you these walls were thin. Who's with him? It's that mass man's voice. Oh, I don't like this. How's that? Bring in government officials. What would they do? They'd make an examination. If they found those two are issuing money that's worthless, they'll land in jail. Why don't you come to my home? We can talk it over there. All right. Come on, we can go right out the back way. No one will see you with that mask over your face. Right. Well, Richfield, looks as if you were right. What are we going to do? We're certainly not going to wait for that mask man to make a case against Sadly, us. Sadly, I'm going to take what I have and skip out. The sooner the better. Boys, 
I'm going over to the bank right now and get the gold out. Dark in a few minutes. That'll help. I'll go with you. You came here in a wagon, did you? Yes. Bring to the back door of the bank as soon as it gets dark. We'll put the gold on board and make a getaway. After leaving the cafe, Barnaby Boggs and the Lone Ranger went to Boggs' home. They stood in the darkness near the porch. Presently, the door opened and... Barnaby, I... Oh, I didn't know there was someone with you. My dear, you are a fibber. Why, Uncle Barnaby. You knew very well that this masked man was with me. Fact is, Judy, you could hear his voice. All right, I did know he was here. Good evening. Good evening, Judy. Nice to see you again. I came because I... Well, I was curious. You did go to the cafe, didn't you? Yes. We took advantage of something you told me. Oh, really? Have I been of help? I think so. What did you do? I knew that Bowers and Richfield were holding a conference in that back room. Oh, yes. You mentioned having heard Richfield and Deke while they were in there. The walls are very thin. That's what we counted on, Judy. You see, my friend and I held a conversation in the kitchen... One that was primarily for the benefit of Richfield and Bowers. You mean you wanted them to overhear you? Precisely. We'll not know how successful we were until we hear from Toto. But what did you say? What did you want to do? Honey, have you ever seen a pot of stew standing quiet on the stove? A pot of stew? You look at the top and it's all slick and liquid. Yes. But you just stick the spoon in deep and stir it up. And all the things that are hidden will come to the surface. Uncle Barnaby, what has Stu to do with Richfield's bank? <laughs> well, same idea, my dear. The Lone Ranger planned to stir those two crooks up and see what they'd do. I was watching them. We'll have to see what Bowers and Richfield do before we can plan our next move. Hey, you hear that? Hoofbeats coming this way. I've been listening to them for several seconds. Oh, I hope it's Tonto. It is. There he is. See him? My sakes, how he's riding. He must have news. Oh, Scott, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Kimoshabi. What's happening, Toto? You come quick. Two fella back a bank. Then load all gold into wagon. Run away. Are they behind the bank right now? That's right. It's time for us to move. <laughs> Slash the gold bowers. Good. You did all right here, Richfield. Better than I did in Junction City. Yeah, but... Someone's coming. Confound it. I hope we'd not be seen. One silver. Set mass, man. It's a lone ranger. I was afraid of something like this. What are you going to tell him? I've broken no law. Oh, who's silver? Oh, my Well, what's this? A bank robbery? No, it isn't. You mind your own business. Richfield. Cleaning out your own bank? I'm moving the gold to a safer place. There's no law against that. Now, you leave me alone. Some time ago, you rode on silver with me. You're going to ride again. No, no, I won't. Rope will help. help. Stop. Take it off. Will you see? Keep out of it, Bowers. Come on, Richfield. You'll pay for this. You'll be sorry. We'll see. Up you come. Bowers, do something. Don't try it. Just stick around. Richfield will soon return. Let me down, I tell you. Let me down. One silver. The hoofbeats of the great horse Silver had barely died away when Bowers heard several other horses approaching. He recognized the round form of Barnaby Boggs. And then the moonlight showed upon the sheriff and Tonto, and then a couple of deputies. Oh, 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 oh. What's going on here? A bank robbery, that's what it is, Sheriff. The Indian's tip was correct. Say, you're the critter that just came to town. Now, wait, this is no robbery. Whose team? Mine, but that's... Whose wagon? Mine, but listen a minute. Looting the bank, I'll bet a cookie. Get that Indian off that wagon. This is none of your affair. This had... Plenty gold here. Gold? I knew it. But it's not a robbery. I... That is, we... Well, Richfield... Don't you try to lie out of it, sir. I'm not. And don't try to say that Simon Richfield has taken all the gold out of his own bank. Well, he is. He... uh, Well, that is... What's that? He's taking the gold away? What in tarnation does he aim to use to back the currency he's issued if he ain't got no gold in there? I don't know how he runs his bank. It's none of my affair. Bowers, if you were telling the truth about Richfield, we could toss him in jail. He can't run out with all the gold. Well, he is. He's borrowed my wagon. You can look around here see his footprints if you want to verify what I say. That masked man carried him away. Just a minute now. Are you calling Simon Richfield a crook? Well, I... Either he's a crook or you're a bank robber. Now, which is it? I'm not a bank robber. Then Richfield's a crook getting ready to abscond with all our gold. Yes, he is. Now you can talk, Richfield. Oh, is you double-crossing liar. Richfield. I heard all you said. Where you been? That masked man brought me back so I could hear it all. 
You turned on me. So you're fixing to abscond, eh, Rich? No. That man's a thief. You cut him looting the bank. Well, you can't get away with that, Sarge. You took that gold out yourself and you know it. I don't know anything about it. Call me a thief. I'll show you. Watch that gun. Look out. Oh, my shoulder. Try any more gunplay and it'll be worse. You... No. You tried to kill me. All right, Bowers. I'll fix you. <sighs> Sheriff Boggs, that man's a crook and I can prove it. Just try to cash all that paper money in Junction City. Just try it. Try to cash the notes Richfield issued. Try that and see how the gold will last. By thunder, you're both going to the calaboose. Now, come on, get started. <laughs> Judy! Judy, where are you? Here I am, Uncle Barnaby. <laughs> So funny. Honey, I just came from the jail after the sheriff tossed Bowers and Richfield in with those crooks that tried to rob me. A lot of people <laughs> will lose their money, won't they? Oh, they won't lose much. The gold is on hand here and in Junction City. But I was telling you... Yes? When those skinflint bankers landed in jail, Red and Spike set up a howl. Oh. <laughs> Seemed that they, they counted on Richfield to fix things with a jury at their trial so they wouldn't go to jail. When they saw him jailed and there to stay, they turned state's evidence. <laughs> Richfield hired them to try and scare me into banking my gold. Yes, sir. Oh, gracious. Richfield wanted me to bank with him. <laughs> he didn't know what he was getting into. He didn't figure on the Lone Ranger. Oh, honey, there's a gent that no one can figure on. I know it, Uncle Barnaby. I know it. Oh, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.